Hi, welcome to Flight String Tutorial Series. In this video, we will show you how to use two different meshing strategies. Trimmed Mesher and Aligned Mesher tools. Trimmed Mesher gives unstructured, decent quality grids that is suitable for all types of surfaces. However, for lifting surfaces like wings or propeller blades, structured aligned mesher will be more suitable in capturing leading edge or spanwise refinements. We'll look at the Piper PA24 CAD example we've used previously. Let's take a look at the statistics of the faces and vertices before we start working on the mesh. Make a note of that and we aim to improve the mesh quality while lowering those faces and vertices count. Then we'll test out the meshing strategies in the CAD scene. First, activate Select Faces tool and deactivate other Select tools if selected. Check that the toggle wireframe is activated so that the mesh is visible. Let's zoom into the wing inboard top panel. We can also make the scene window bigger by dragging the border down a little. Click on the wing panel surface. Right-click to bring up the context menu. Select Retessellate. Trimmed Mesher. The previously entered tessellation value of 0.12 is shown here. We can increase that and see the effect of a larger tessellation edge size on the mesh. The larger the edge size is, the coarser the mesh will be. See the sharp and blocky wing leading edge? That would not be recommended if you wish to get good results. By lowering the size back to 0.12, we do get good quality grids at the leading and trailing edges. But we really don't need the high density grid in the middle section of the wing panel. What about the rounded wing tip? If we look at the current trimmed mesher edge size setting, we see a value of 0.12. We can increase the edge size to 0.4, but the mesh is just too coarse. To better capture the rounded wingtip shape, we need to drop the edge size to a smaller value of 0.1, which in turn will increase the number of faces and vertices. Keep in mind the more faces and vertices there are, the longer time the simulation will take to run. Let's try using the aligned mesher to get the results we prefer. How do we know a surface is suitable to use aligned mesher tool? In the CAD scene, right-click to bring up the context menu and select. Patch color variable. Number of curves. Toggle wireframe off to get a better look at the colors of each surface. Zoom out a little and you'll see surfaces with about five different colors. Green color surfaces are best candidates for the structured aligned mesh since green color indicates four perimeter curves, just like a rectangle. Let's switch the patch color variable back to body ID and activate the wireframe. The goal with aligned mesher is to create good quality grids with higher mesh density at the leading and trailing edges while keeping the middle section to relatively lower mesh density. We'll select the wing inboard top panel and right-click to select. Retessellate. Aligned mesher. The simulation tab on the left switches over to aligned mesh pane. On the CAD scene, four different color vertices are visible. These are the corner vertices that will define the four sides of a rectangular surface, which sometimes can be non-rectangular. The starting vertex will be red, followed by green, blue, and cyan. An easier way to remember the sequence is to recall the RGB format. You can rearrange the order by selecting a vertex and then right-click in the scene to bring up the context menu. Select Mark as Vertex 1, red, and the vertex is now red in color. Repeat the steps to mark other vertices. Each time you click on a vertex, a magenta arrow shows the vertex you should select next. Once the four vertices are set, we'll look at the aligned mesh pane. There are specific settings for source, target, sweep, sweep 1 and 2. The source curve is the red curve between the red and green vertices. The target curve is the blue curve between the blue and cyan vertices. Sweep 1 curve is between green and blue vertices, while Sweep 2 is between cyan and red vertices. As a best practice, source subdivisions of 40 would be a good starting point for wing-type surface. 
we'll go with six sweep subdivisions. For the source curve, set dual side successive growth scheme with growth rate value of 1.2 as a best practice. Repeat the dual side successive and 1.2 settings for target curve. Click on the generate mesh button to see the mesh results. Now we see good quality structured grids with concentrations at the leading and trailing edges. See how much we have dropped the number of faces and vertices while maintaining a good quality mesh. A useful rule of thumb with cordwise refinement is to look at the grid with the largest edge and you can go two to three times the length in spanwise direction. If the largest grid aspect ratio is about 3 to 1, the leading edge or trailing edge aspect ratio will be around 20 to 1 and that is perfectly fine. Keep in mind, Flightstream relies on the underlying analytic CAD and that means no matter how fine or coarse the grids are, the vertices are projected onto the CAD model. Let's repeat the steps on the wing inboard bottom panel. Flightstream keeps the aligned mesher settings and we can apply the same settings here for this panel. Do make sure the four corner vertices are defined in a similar manner. For the outboard panels, we can stick to the same aligned mesher settings except for the sweep subdivisions. With longer spanwise panel, we will increase the sweep subdivisions from 6 to 20. This will give us an aspect ratio of about 3 to 1 for the largest grid. Can we apply the aligned mesher settings on the wingtip? Let's find out. For this wingtip surface to work with aligned mesh, the wingtip surface must exist as a single surface that goes from top to bottom. The rounded wingtip has a relatively small surface compared to the wing panels. We can decrease the sweep subdivisions to about 8 and apply it. Now this aligned mesh looks great on the wingtip and captures the shape better than trimmed mesher without throwing a lot of grids at it. Similarly, we can use the aligned mesher strategy on the horizontal tail. Here, there are five corner vertices. We'll rearrange them to select four corners that define the leading and trailing edges. The unselected vertex will remain in black color and we can ignore that. Keeping to the same 40 source subdivisions, we'll apply 16 sweep subdivisions to get the high quality grid we are after. For the tip region, we'll apply 12 sweep subdivisions to capture the shape more accurately. Let's take a final count of the tessellated faces and vertices. With the aligned mesher strategy, we managed to reduce both the number of tessellated faces and vertices by more than 42% and generate a high quality mesh. The lower number of tessellated faces and vertices, coupled with high quality mesh, will produce more accurate results in a shorter amount of simulation run time. This concludes the Flightstream meshing tutorial video. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more Flightstream videos, check out these other ones from our channel. Smash the thumbs up like button, or hit the subscribe button to get notification of new videos.